Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial one of LTEC 651. In this tutorial, we're going to recreate a version of the shuttle program interactive multimedia that we saw in session one. So let me give you an idea of what we're going to create using H5P. So let me switch over to my browser for a minute. And you can see here, I'm actually in a discussion thread called example of H5P content. And if you look in here, I have embedded some interactive multimedia that I've built with H5P. And so I can actually take this into full screen and you see it's got some of the same images and some of the same text. It even has the audio. Space Shuttle Program. The Space Shuttle Program was the United States government's and you can see if I ma mouse over these, there's actually six slides total, including some quiz content, some which true or false, and then this is fill in the blank. And I can easily navigate between all of these. And then if I click here, I can even see all of the different slides that I created. So in this tutorial, we're gonna recreate this using H5P. All right, so now you have a little bit of an idea of what we're going to create. Uh, first, we need to get all of our content together. And uh, I'm assuming that you've already downloaded the zip file uh, named Files for Session 4 Tutorial. And so I'm going to just go ahead and double click on that. It's on my desktop and it's going to unzip itself and I don't need the zip file anymore. And if I look inside of this folder, let's take a look at what we have here. So I can see there's actually three audio files, audio for slide one, audio for slide two. There's one, two, three, four, five images. And then there are text files one for each slide. So all of the content is already put together for you just so we can focus on working with H5P. All right, so we've got our content there and now let's switch back over to our browser. And in order to use H5P on the College of Education server, this is what you need to do. First thing you need to do is navigate to this URL. It's H5P dot coe dot hawaii dot edu and just to make it easier for you here is that address h5p dot coe dot hawaii dot edu now when you arrive on this page it's not a very pretty page it's not really meant for public consumption you are going to want to click here create some h5p content so go ahead and click that and that's going to take you to this login page. And what you want to do is actually sign in with your UHID. And this is set up so that if you are a, at the University of Hawaii and you try to log in with your UHID, it's automatically going to add you to the WordPress site and give you authoring privileges for using the H5P tools. So go ahead and click sign in with your UHID. And you're going to have to put in your username and password, just like you do for all of your UH services, and click Login. And you may have to authenticate using your phone. And eventually, you're going to arrive at this scene, which or, or this page, which looks like this. And just in case you see something different, you want to click on the Add New. And it will load this particular page in case you see something different. Now, take a look at this little item right here. So this box is called the H5P Hub. And this is the tool that allows you to choose the kind of content you want to create using H5P. And you can see some of the recently used ones, or you can put the newest first, or you can list them A to Z. And there's quite a few different things that you can uh, check out here. And I encourage you to do that. So for example, if you wanted to create an accordion, you could click on details. In fact, you can even take a look at a demo, which will link you over to h5p.org. Notice this opened in a new tab. And so here is the example of the accordion. And Accordions, of, of course, are just these tools that allow you to open and close content. 
Okay, so that is what that's all about. So back, come back over to the COE website. And what we want to do now is back out of this. And the thing that we want to do, you create is a course presentation. So let's just go ahead and search on that course presentation. So I'm going to click on that. And right away, we're in our our editing interface. And so you may want to go into full screen mode, which hides some of those things, some of the panels around WordPress, which may get in the way if you don't want them. But let's go ahead and create this course presentation. So the first thing we need to do is give it a title. Okay, so uh, because we're doing this for LTEX 651, let's type in LTEX 651. And let's call this uh, session for demo. You can call it whatever you want. And we better put our names in here. I'm going to put dash Dan. You go ahead and put your name in it. And by default, our course presentation has no content in it. And so what we want to do is start adding in some content. And if we come back over here to the example, we can see that the first image has this text, Space Shuttle Program. The space shuttle program was the United States government space program from 1981 to 2011. And then it also has some audio. So let's go ahead and build that in H5P. So the first thing that we want to do is click on this budget, right? But this button right here where it says slide background. So let's go ahead and click that. And it's going to give us a couple of options here. Do we want to specify a background for the template? meaning it's going to be applied to all of the slides in this course presentation, or do we want to just impact this slide that we're currently editing, which happens to be the first slide? We just want to change the background of this slide. So, and we want to have an image background instead of a color fill. A color fill would look something like that. Uh, but we, we don't want to do that. We actually want to include an image. So what I'm going to do is select image and then click add. And it's going to bring up a file browser. And so I'm going to go to my desktop and then I'm going to enter into my folder files for session four tutorial. I'm going to double click on that. And I want the image for slide one. And then I'm going to click open. And then H5P is going to think about it for a minute and it's going to upload that image. So let's go ahead and watch that. It'll take a couple of seconds to upload all that data to the server. And voila, we have that image. That's what we want to use. And boom, it puts that in and we can just dismiss this menu just like that. And boom, it's already in there. Very nice. Now it's a little bit stretched, not a big deal. Uh, for our purposes. We're just trying to learn the ropes here. Now, one of the things, let's give this slide a meaningful name. If I come down here and click, you can see it says slide one, no title. Now we can change the title of this slide by clicking this pencil icon right here. And let's just call it introduction. We could call it anything we wanted. And if I just click out of there, boom, it's saved. And if I want to dismiss that menu, I just click on this again to hide it and it will go away. So now what I want to do is actually enter in a little bit of content. So what I'm going to do is go side by side here. I'm going to, we don't need this anymore, so I'm going to close this. I'm going to go side by side and I am actually going to open text slide number one, this text file. And I'm just going to put it over on the side here so you can see it really easily. And so we want the title to be a, the Space Shuttle Program. So I'm going to select that text and I'm going to co copy it. And then what I'm going to do is come back over to H5P and I'm going to click on the text button, which is going to allow me to insert some text. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. It's all caps. Notice that Space Shuttle Program. And I'm going to select it and then I'm going to change its side, size. I want it to be big, so I'm going to make it a heading two. And then, importantly, I want to click Done, just like that. And let's go ahead and see this in full screen. Now, a couple of things I noticed. By default, it's just kind of in the center of the screen. And then I also noticed that the font color is dark, which I don't want. So I'm going to click Select This Again, and you can see these little buttons come up. I want to click the Edit button. 
And what I'm going to do is actually, I want to make this text white. So I'm going to come over here to text color. I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to change it to pure white. Now, one of the problems when you do that is you have, we have white on white. And so you can't really see it. Don't let that confuse you. But if I select it here so it's highlighted, you can see it's actually still there. And then I'm going to click done. And boom, voila, now I have this nice white font, which looks good on this background. And now what I can do is if I click the transform button, it's telling me the X and Y position of this text as well as the size. And so I'm just going to kind of drag this around and I'm going to get it to about position of X30 and Y30. And then I can even drag these handles to resize that a little bit, just like that. Excellent. Now what I'm going to do is grab the body text, which I have right here. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to come back over to my slide and I'm going to insert another text box. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And this time I can leave it normal font, but I, I want it to be white again. So I'm going to select this, change it to white. And we can forget all of these other things and I'm just going to click done like that. Good. And again, I can kind of drag this around. I want the X position to be 30. And then I'm going to spread that out so it takes up the page just like that. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Now, what I want to do is I can click out of that. And one of the things I've noticed is we actually haven't saved our work yet. And because we're working on the server, it's always a good idea to save our work. So I want to come to proceed to save. Or if I click out of here, you can see there is the create button. And so we better click that so we don't lose our work. I'm gonna go ahead and click create. Excellent, and now it's actually saved our work. So let me show you, if I click on this button here, all H5P content, you can see right at the top here that the latest one that's been created is LTEX 651 Session 4 Demo, Dan. And so you should see your, if you're following along, you should see your version here. And then you can see the actual version that I created here for the demonstration. That's the one that's embedded over here. Okay. So if we wanted to continue editing this, I can just click edit right here. And that's going to reopen it in edit mode so I can continue adding information to this. So, so far we've created a single slide. Let's come back over to our example. Oh, we forgot to insert the audio. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm in edit mode and you can see that this button right here is for inserting audio. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then it's going to ask me what audio do you want to upload? First of all, we should give this a name. So I'm going to call this slide one audio. And we might even give it a little bit more information. Space, Space Shuttle Program, something like that. And now it's going to ask you, well, what audio file do you want to use? What source file? So I'm going to click on that. And I can either paste in a link or I can upload an audio file. We're going to upload our audio files. So let's go ahead and click that. And it will take a minute for it to pop up. And I'm still in my tutorial folder and sure enough I want audio for slide one it's an mp3 file so I'm going to click open and it'll take a minute for that to upload and then a cup one more choice here is we get to select the layout of the audio player and I actually want it to be full and so I'm going to set it to full mode and then click done and sure enough we can see here we have our audio player now right now it's this really small it's just this little cube so I'm gonna drag it out so we get something a little bit bigger something that looks like this and now I can kind of reposition this I want to get it way over and I'm kind of sticking it in the corner like that and of course if I wanted to edit it for some reason let's make sure it works I'm gonna turn it oh I can't play it unless I actually go if I click update let me click update so it's gonna save our work now and now let me lower the audio slightly and let's just make sure this works space shuttle program excellent yep so th it's that it's as easy as that for integrating audio using h5p 
All right, let's go back into edit mode. So I'm going to click edit here. And now we want to add in our second slide. Really easy to do. So I'm going to come over here and let's just take a look at that. That's the program description. So you could see here it has this satellite photo and some title text and some body text and some more audio. Really easy to do. It's the same steps that we just went through, but we need to add a new slide, which is something we haven't done. So the way we do that is we click here to add new slide. And by default, it put it introduction here, it inserted it after. If for some reason we wanted to change the, the order of these, we can use these two buttons right here to move the slide to the left or move the slide to the right. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this. We know we need that satellite picture. So let's go ahead and add that. So I'm going to click image and I'm going to upload the image that I want to use. And sure enough, I've got it labeled here, image slide two, and I'm going to click open. And it's going to take a minute to upload that. Now, one of the things while this is uploading, you'll notice here that it requires alternative text. Whenever we're using image that's not a background image, it's going to ask us to enter some alternative text. And the reason it's required is if the browser can't load that image for some reason, it will show the alternative text. And this is also important for text to speech readers for accessibility. So we want to make sure that this is accessible in case people are visually impaired. And so we could put in whatever alternative text we want, but let's just say uh, satellite in orbit with Earth in the background something like that so just a description satellite and orbit with earth and background and i'm going to go ahead and click next and now what we can do is position this however we want and so i'm going to bring it all the way up to the top and i'm going to slide this down so it takes up the full height of our picture and one thing I notice is that I have a little bit too much area over here on the left. And so I'd like this image that we just uploaded to be a different aspect ratio. Well, believe it or not, we can do that right in H5P. And to do that, I'm going to click edit here. And then I'm going to click edit again. And this is going to load up an editing interface. And if I scroll up a little bit, you can see here there's a crop tool. And what I want to do is make this picture so that it's not quite as tall. So I'm going to select the crop tool and then I'm going to just click and drag a box around this thing. Something like that just to get a little bit of the height gone. And then I can reposition my crop however I want it. I want it to be the full width, but I'm losing some of the height. So something a little like that doesn't have to be perfect. When I'm done, I can click the green check mark and it's going to go ahead and make that change. And then let's save. Excellent. And now because we've edited the photo, it needs to process that. So it's going to save and re-upload it again as a new version of this image. So it'll take a minute to process. Let's go ahead and let that finish. And it still says, please wait. Okay, boom. It's actually saved everything and it's taking a minute to render this. It's a pretty large file. And now what I'm going to do is click done and excellent. Now we have a little bit of a wider image. So now what I want to do is I want to change the background color. See how it's this gray? I actually want it to be white. Now there's a couple of ways we can do that. One way to be, would be to just draw a shape and insert that. So let's do that. It's going to be a rectangle and I want the fill color to be white. I could make it any color I wanted and then I really don't want there to be a border. So I'm going to leave the border width to be zero and then I'm just going to click done. And you can see here, I have on top of my image now, this white background. And so I'm going to stick this all the way up in the corner. And I want to drag all the way over and drag this all the way down like that. So we've got this nice white background. And now I'm going to snap this over and I'm going to load up the content for slide two. And let me just zoom in on this a little bit so it's easy for everybody to see. And so I'm going to copy this text copy and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the text button and I'm going to paste this text in. What is the shuttle program 
and I want this to be large. So I'm going to go up to heading number two and I'm going to click done. Excellent. Let me move this around a little bit. I'm going to try to get it to 30, 30 again for my X, Y position. And then I need to take up two lines. I can't have it all on one line. And then I'm going to do one more text box for the body text. Click the text tool and just paste that in. And I'm just going to leave it black in normal sized font and just click OK or done. And boom, I can resize this however I want. Give it a little bit of breathing room. There we go. Good. Let me go full screen here. And now one last step is to insert the audio. So I'm going to select the audio and I'm just going to call this slide to audio. And I think this is shuttle description, something like that. Click the source file. Again, I want to upload some audio. And I've already labeled it. It's audio slide two. I'm going to click open. And let's go ahead and let that load. It'll take a minute. Excellent. Now that it has uploaded, I want to adjust my player mode to be full. And I'm going to click done. And then I'm going to resize this and simply drag this down here. And I want it to be a little bit bigger so it's easy for the user to work with. Something like that. Now, a couple of things I want to show you. Now, imagine we had this scenario, but for some reason we wanted this to go back underneath. Now, we wouldn't want to do that, but let's say you ended up in this scenario. What you can do is select any one of these and you can bring it to the front or bring it to the back. And so I can just send to back is going to put the image back one. And so what I could do now is bring this to the front. And so I just wanted to show you that in case you get confused about what's happening there. Okay, very good. And so we could reorder content that way. Now we've made a lot of changes with our new slide. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and click update. Excellent. So now if I take a look here at my menu, I've got introduction. How come I don't have a second slide? And I should have slide two. How come it's not showing up here? Let's go back over and let's take a look at our edit this. Aha, it has no title. That's why it's not showing up. So what we need to do here is click here and let's call this program description, just like that. We could have named it anything that we want, but now if I update this, and click on that side menu, I should see both options. I can jump to either one, just like that. Okay, great, let's keep editing. So let's click on edit, and let's see what our third slide was. So after sh oh, program description, then it was shuttle description, just like that. Um, so we might wanna rename this one program description, not a big deal. That menu, and we wanna add a third slide very good. And let's go ahead and add an image like we did before. And this is image three. And this, you'll remember this one, I'm sure. This is the one with the one, two, three on it. And we need to enter in some alternative text. So space shuttle on landing pad. You could call it what it put in what a, a more descriptive explanation than that, but that's good for now. And great, I wanna go all the way up into this corner and I'm gonna resize it just like that, good. Now this time I'm gonna make this background white. So I'm gonna come back over to slide background and I'm gonna do a color fill. And I happen to know that all the way up in this left-hand corner here, actually we can use FF, FF, FF is the hexadecimal code for pure white. So let's go ahead and put that in. And you can see now that this is a pure white background for this slide. So let's go ahead and get our copy for slide three. And let me zoom in so it's easier for you to see. And so our title is gonna be shuttle description. And so come back over here and I'm gonna put shuttle description. I'm gonna go heading two to make it larger. Click done. And I'm gonna position this at 3030 
to be consistent with my other slides. And then I can resize this a little bit. And then we have this body text. So I'm going to select all of that, copy, come over here and click the text menu. And I'm going to paste this in. Now, if it didn't paste cleanly for you, what I want you to do is remove these numbers. And what we're going to do is in the editor here is put in an ordered list like that. One, two, and then bring that up three, just like that, and click done. Excellent. Now, I can move this around however I want. I need to resize it so that it flows properly. Everyone can see it. Very good. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add our audio. So let's call this slide three audio and we'll upload. And it will, depending on the, the size of that file, let's go full and click done. And if I resize this, I can see all of the controls and I'm gonna come down here so it's at 30. I'm gonna make it wide so that it's easy for the user to interact with. Okay, very good, very good. And let's go ahead and click update so that we save this work. All right, so now we should have three slides, one, two, and three. But like we learned already, it we can't jump to slide three because we didn't give it a name. Uh, so we need to do that. Let's go ahead and click edit again. and come over here and we could call this whatever we want and let's call this shuttle assemblies because that's really what this is about the shuttle assemblies okay very good now let's hide that menu very good and it's time for i believe a quiz item so let's take a look at that. It has an image here on the right, and then it has a true or false question. So let's learn how to do that. So I'm gonna switch back over. I'm, again, I'm gonna add a new slide, and we know we need our fourth image, so let's go ahead and add that. Super easy to do. That is image four here. And it'll take a minute to upload, depending on your bandwidth. And let's see. Let's say space shuttle in orbit with bay doors open. And we'll click done. And let's go ahead and take up the majority of the page. Now that's a little too wide. So what we'll want to do is actually crop this. So I'm going to come into edit mode and click edit image. And if I scroll up, here's my crop tool. And I want to make this image less wide. So I'm going to crop out some of the satellite and quite a bit of the background uh, here on the left. You could do it however you want. This is just for practice. So I'm going to click save after, after implementing that change. Sure enough, we can see it reflected here. I'll click done. And I'm going to slide that all the way over. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's all the way to the right. And now what I want to do is insert a true-false question, just like that. And there's a few things that we have to enter here for information. So let's go ahead and get our copy, which is text 4. And let me go ahead and increase the size to make it easier for us to see. First thing we want to do is give this quiz question a name. So let's call this slide, whoops, slide four quiz question. And let's just put TF so we can remember what it is. So what is the question? It is this. It's not really a question. It's a statement. The main idea of the space shuttle program was the exploration of deep space. Now we want to specify is that true or false? And actually the correct answer is false. And so now what we can do is give some feedback on the correct answer or feedback on the wrong answer. And so you can see I've already specified the text if the answer is incorrect. So I'm going to copy that 
and feedback on wrong answer. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the feedback on the correct answer. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And there are some other things that you can turn off, other settings that you can manipulate there. But let's just leave it as default for now. And let's click Done. Very good. And now we can resize this so that it fits in the white section of our canvas. We may want to drag this down a little bit, whatever looks good to you. And we actually may even want to add in a title here that says in caps quiz number one. And let's go ahead and make that oops, a heading two so it stands out a little bit. Something like that. Again, we're just experimenting to get the hang of H5P. Very good. And that looks good. And we better give this a name. And let's just call this quiz number one. We could have called it anything. Very good. And we have one more that we need to do. So I'm going to come back over to Canvas and take a look. So this is actually a fill in the blank. And there's actually one, two, three items that are the fill in the blank items. So let me show you how to build that really easy in H5P. I'm going to come back over to the editor. I'm going to insert a new slide. And this slide has a an image in the background. So let's go ahead and load it as an image background for this slide. I'm going to click Add. And it's slide image 5, just like that. And it's going to go ahead and upload that. And it's uploading, almost done. It's processing, okay, very good. And voila, we've got this nice background picture. And now what we wanna do is actually insert a fill in the blank question. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Whoops, I didn't click properly. And here is the fill in the blank question. And so let's go ahead and title this quiz number two fill in the blank, just so we can remember what it is. And let's go ahead and open up our slide five text. And let's take a look at what we have here. So what we're going to do is task description. Normally it says fill in the missing words and that, that will leave it just as that. Uh, but let's make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna make it heading two. Now what we need to do is insert the text block. And let me show you how this works. I'm going to copy this. And it, it explains it here in the instructions, but you can see some of this text is between asterisks. That text is actually the correct answer that the fill in the blank is supposed to use. So during the space blank program, and so a correct answer could be shuttle with a capital S or shuttle with a lowercase s. And so notice that those are between the two asterisks. That's how we specify the answer. And the slash just allows you to put in alternative answers. You could put in as many as you wanted to. Okay. And then, of course, the answer to the next question is Earth with a capital E or a little e. And then orbit is the last one. So once we get all of this information specified, there are some more complex things we can do, but let's keep it simple for now. We're going to click Done. And now what we can do is just resize this. And because the text is kind of a dark color, we need to drag it down so that it's over the lighter part of our picture. Something like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea. And let's go ahead and name this quiz number two. Great. And let's go ahead and click update so that we save all of our work. Excellent. And of course, you can see this goes through. Here is quiz number one. And I could take this in full screen if I wanted to. The main idea of the space shuttle program was the exploration of deep space. And if I say true, and I check my answer, it should say, sorry, that's not right. And this is the information that we put in there. Now I could reset it and try again. And if I click false and check, 
it says that's right. And notice that it gives me this little one out of one scoring mechanism. And then let's check out our quiz number two. And it takes a minute for that background to load, but it says during the space, and let's put in the word shuttle program, a reusable space shuttle was launched into low, let's say Mars orbit. When the mission was complete, the shuttle independently moved itself out of orbit to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. And if I check this, it's going to show me that I got two out of three because Mars was incorrect. And then the very last slide is the summary slide, and it shows me how I how it shows the user how they did on the quiz items. And you can see here I got three out of four. Now a couple of things that I want to show you that we haven't looked at yet, and this will just be the last little bit. So there's a couple of settings that we can edit for our content. Take a look here at the behavior settings down at the bottom. And so these are some things that you want to, you can turn on and off. For example, show solution button in the summary slide. Do you want your students to be able to see the answers? Do you want them to be able to retry on the summary slide? Those are options you have and you can turn these on or off if you want to. Another thing that I wanna show you is if you click on metadata here, there are some things that are quite important. So first of all, we can title this whatever we want. We can also specify a license. Remember that H5P is meant to be open source and part of the free and open source movement. And so it's very common to use a Creative Commons license. You don't have to. You could specify your own copyright if you wanted to. But what I'm going to do is put an attribution share alike. In other words, I want people to be able to use this. They have to give me attribution and they have to share this. And there are some different versions here that we can specify. And so I might put in um, from 2021 and I could even put in my website if I wanted to. I can put in the author's name. I could put in more details here if I wanted to. I could specify the change log if I keep updating this content and even add additional information. But I'm going to go ahead and save that metadata. Now, the last thing that I want to show you before we learn how to embed this is our, let me just go ahead and close that, are these settings over here, the display options. Now, if you remember, if we look over here, notice how there's a reuse button here and an embed button. Though whether or not you want those buttons to be shown are determined over here. So for example, display embed button, yes or no. I can turn that off. Would not allow other people to embed this content somewhere else, but we want to leave it on. Same with the copyright button. Also display toolbar below. Okay, this toolbar, this is the toolbar below here. You may not want users to be able to do that, so that would turn it off, the whole thing off. And then also, do you want to allow users to download this content? Yes or no. And that specifies whether or not that reuse button is there. So let's go ahead and leave all those settings on. I want to update this. And now in the last minute here, I want to show you how to embed this creation that we have created. And so it's just taking a minute here to load. And you can see rights of use. It's got the license in here, which is just wonderful. And it actually links right to the Creative Commons license. Very nice. It's got my name in it. It could be a link to my website or something if I was the creator of this. So let me just X out of that. But what I want to show you right now is the embed code, because this is how we're going to embed this interactive content into Canvas. And so it brings up this embed code. And what I want to do is just click here and copy this iframe code. It's just like when you embed your Loom videos. So I'm going to come over to Canvas. And what I want to do is I've just got an example, uh, an example one here, but I'm going to click reply. I'm going to come over to the source code 
and I'm going to paste in this iframe and then I'm going to click out of it. And it'll take a second to load. But sure enough, you can see that it's there. And if I click post reply, it is going to embed my H5P interactive content right into Canvas, just like this. And of course, you could embed this content anywhere. You could do it in Canvas, in Laulima, in other websites, and it's up to you. And the audio works. Space shuttle program. The quizzes work. And all of that using free and open source tools. And importantly, I want to emphasize that this content is hosted on the College of Education WordPress server for H5P. So that's where that content lives, even though we're embedding it here in Canvas. Okay, everyone, that's our first jump into H5P. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.